Okay, let's study the important problem of mechanical governor or flywheel governor or fly ball governor. So this is basically a mechanism which can regulate the speed of an engine. So in this case, basically the mechanism that you see here is rotated with some frequency capital omega and the top ring on the shaft is fixed so it it can't move this is fixed on the shaft but the one at the bottom is movable because it can go up and down like this with capital m and then there are two masses which are basically uh, which play a very important role which are little m on both sides so as this mechanism goes up and down basically you can imagine that the angle will change so so for instance like let's say if it goes up it will be something like this right and similarly if it goes down maybe uh, okay so like the mechanism so i'm exaggerating my drawing here but will come up down like this okay and then uh, it means that if you, for instance, connect some sort of mechanism from the position of the ring and then connect it to some sort of a valve or like a switch at the output, you can use this for a feedback signal, a mechanical feedback signal, uh, which can, for instance, regulate the intake of the fuel into an engine. So basically you can... Uh, and after the constant rotation speed omega so basically the position that the bottom ring goes up and down up and down it will be determined by this capital omega rotation speed okay so let me uh, raise these parts which are basically important but not essential for the problem solving the problem so this is basically a single degree of freedom system and since uh, all the angles all this is basically a diagonal uh, uh, shape so like all the edges have the same length d all the links have the same length so basically we can just work with this theta as my uh, generalized coordinate so this is a one dot system and I've, i'm going to choose theta and this is one dot why because uh, basically this capital uh, omega is given so it's an external and dynamical constraint. If it was free, for instance, uh, or, or like it was an internal variable, then it would have been a two degree of freedom system. But it's like when, when something, someone gives you omega and like says what happens, then it's not, no longer a degree of freedom. Okay. So basically, we are going to solve this problem with the Lagrangian technique. So I'm going to write the Lagrangian in terms of theta, theta dot, uh, and t, which is basically the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. And oh, by the way, there is, of course, the gravity acting on the system. And obviously, the most important uh, part is calculating the kinetic energy. So I'm going to solve it with two, at least three uh, different uh, cases, uh, approaches. So let's look, look at them all one by one. So first of all, I'm going to use just Cartesian coordinates to write down the position vector, okay? So basically, in this case, um, so let's say this is another, and then, oh, sorry. This is x, this is y, this is z, okay? And uh, let's just focus on the first mass here. The other will obviously have the same kinetic and potential energy, so uh, it's sufficient to calculate just one of them, okay? And basically, uh, in this case, I'll take here this fixed position as, as, as my origin, so this is my origin, okay? So it means that the entire assembly will be at the bottom. Okay, so this is D, and at the end of the D, you have the M. 
Evet, andan çiziyor theta here. Okay, but then uh, let's look at this projection on the xy axis. Okay, so this is this projection. Okay, so uh, and basically, okay, I need to get this further. It would have been much easier, I think, if we kept the ring at the bottom. But well, doesn't matter that much really. Okay, so first of all, let's think about this distance, which is the z coordinate is basically d cosine theta, right? Uh, and does it make sense if theta is zero? Basically, uh, yes, this is going to be at the minus d location in this coordinate system. And this purple on the xy projection is d sine theta in the xy plane, okay? Okay, but then what's this angle? So let, let, let me come close. What's this angle? So basically, uh, X, Y and purple are on the same plane, okay? And I like to understand what this angle is. Okay, so this angle. So let me call this angle phi. So basically, imagine that at the beginning of the time, this system was aligned in the X, Z. Like let's say at T equals zero, this is uh, the mechanism is on the XZ plane. It means that the uh, Y component of this little mass, M, was zero. So it means that as the time goes, so like as time goes, this angle phi will be capital omega, which is the rotation angle at the top, times T, okay? So in the beginning, basically, uh, then cosine phi is zero, and uh, I can use that uh, like because like in the beginning then I have got like cosine phi is one and sine phi is zero, right? At time equals zero, and at time equals zero, I I know that uh, x component should be the d sine theta, this purple projection, and y component will be zero, and then it's rotating. Okay, uh, so it means that at any given time I will have like the x component will be d sine theta times cosine phi and y component will be the sine theta again but sine phi and this is basically the sine theta cosine and phi is capital omega t and on the other hand y will have the sine theta sine capital omega t so then i can i'm ready to write down the position vector for the mass for the little m so let me call this r1 is uh, in the x direction we got the d sine theta cos omega t in the i direction and in the y direction we have plus d sine theta sine omega t and uh, in, in the z we have already figured out it's, it was uh, the screen vector d cosine theta d cosine theta in the k direction okay so the velocity will be Okay, so theta is my dynamical quantity, it depends on time, but then I will also consider the effect of the cosine capital omega t term. So I will have some expression here, so let's look at this. d cos theta cos omega t theta dot minus d. Uh, actually, it would have been easier to take everything in the d parenthesis, but I didn't, I'll continue like this. D sine theta sine omega t times omega so this is in the i direction plus so i've got for the y direction d cos theta sine omega t in the with the, with the theta dot plus d sine theta cosine omega t omega in the j, j direction plus d sine theta theta dot in the k direction okay and to calculate the kinetic energy i will need the v square which is uh, v1 inner product with itself so okay let's just take the inner product well everything will be d square parenthesis so i'll got square theta cosine square omega theta theta square plus square sine square sorry no no not d square anymore plus sine square theta sine 
omega t square omega square minus t cos theta cos omega t sine theta sine omega t omega theta dot. You might already be seeing some simplifications, but I'm going to just keep all the components uh, to see to, to show you these simplifications. Plus, okay, so continue with the now j dot j term. Cos square sine square omega t theta dot square plus square theta sine cosine cos omega t square omega square plus two cos cos omega t sine theta sine omega t omega theta dot Plus and finally the k dot k the z uh, the contribution from the z direction so d square sine square theta theta dot square okay now look, look, let's look at the simplifications okay so this term these are gone coming back so cos square omega t plus sine square omega t this is one this is also one right see then I can rewrite this expression as v one square is d square cos square, uh, oh by the way, this cos square theta, theta dot square plus sine square theta omega square plus sine square theta theta dot square. So v1 square is just simply d square theta dot square plus d square sine square theta omega square so much uh, a very simple expression in the end okay and basically like the simple expression actually will tell you that actually there was a simpler way but i wanted to go with the most like safest and straightforward way uh, i mean maybe you spend a couple of minutes but you get the answer right if you are careful okay so let's look at the second way so this was basically so far what we have we have done was just work with the cartesian coordinates but like if you if you were to use uh, for instance spherical coordinates, sorry, actually not, not spherical, but uh, yeah, like spherical and cylindrical, let's say together, or like uh, I should say like polar coordinates plus z, if you want, that's also good. So so like this is the same. Uh, let me actually take the same picture that I used for the Cartesian. Okay, so copy this. Here, okay. Okay, so this is still the cosine theta, and this is the sine theta. But here, like instead of writing it in the Cartesian, let me write the position vector uh, in polar coordinates for the x y. So it's like d sine theta in the e rho direction, where rho is basically the unit vector here. And this is the unit vector e, let's say, phi on the other direction, plus uh, d cosine theta in the k direction. Okay. Now remember from the second week, we know that d e rho by d t is it's not zero because as the position change, this will change. But it's, it has a very simple expression. It's basically capital omega, the rotation speed, times e phi. So that means that the velocity will be d cosine theta theta dot e rho. Okay, so this is for the theta derivative. And then next, we got the d sine theta omega e phi plus d. Well, this was minus to begin with. Plus d sine theta theta dot in the k direction. So we square since e rho, e phi, and k, they're all orthogonal to each other. d square cosine square theta, theta dot square, plus d square sine square theta omega square, plus d square sine square theta, theta dot square. And again, uh, we, we can just like cosine square plus sine square is one. 
So we can rewrite this is d square theta dot square plus d square sine square theta omega square as before as you, you can see that uh, like this expression that we have here is exactly like this expression that we got with the Cartesian. Okay, so it's, it's so nice. Okay, once we calculate the velocities, then uh, the rest is much easier. So uh, let me go back. So basically, this is uh, let's go back to the original system. So let me copy to show you what, where we were. So okay, copy this guy, paste it here. Okay, so this this is the the mess we have worked with. Let's say one, two, and then this is three. So then I understand that the kinetic energy for the first and the second objects will be one half m d square theta dot square plus d square sine square theta omega square. How about the third object here? So I also need uh, its kinetic energy to get this. I need to calculate, see basically like R, R3 is nothing but, but uh, two times d cosine theta. It's like two, minus two times d cosine theta k. And like if you don't see it, you can just like simply uh, look at how we got this. Right. So like when I write, write it, this d cosine theta k, it's like twice at the distance uh, on the vertical. So it means that the V3 is minus two plus two D sine theta, theta dot K, and V3 square is four D square sine square theta, theta dot square. Okay, so the total kinetic energy for the system, uh, then is going to be written as T1 plus T2 plus T3. So I'll write this down in a second. But let me look at the total potential energy. So it's got basically, well, I know the uh, set coordinates, right? So it's like, again, here, minus the, sorry, minus the cosine theta for this, and minus 2 the cosine theta for the other particles. It will be V1 plus V2 plus V3. And it will be minus mg d cosine theta and another one for the second identical object. And the, for the third object, we got capital mg 2d cosine theta or simply minus two little m capital M g d cosine theta. Okay, so then I can write the Lagrangian. Uh, so we'll got big T1 plus T2, so the factor of 2 goes away, md square theta dot square plus d square sine square theta omega square. And for the third object, we got 2 capital M d square sine square theta theta dot square minus the potential energy gd cos theta and then the equation of motion d by dt partial l by partial theta dot minus partial l by partial theta is equal to so well basically this is non-conservative uh, co non-constrained forces for the theta coordinate but in this case there is none nothing uh, is being applied so it's like zero only Okay, so let's calculate the derivatives. Partial by partial theta dot is md squared, 2 md squared theta dot here, and then another plus 4 capital md squared sine squared theta theta itself. Right, so, so let me, I'm just making a quick check on myself, so I've got 4 DC square. Okay, yes, looks looks uh, like it's correct. And then uh, the full term derivative of this expression 
is 2MD square theta double dot plus 4MD square sin square theta theta double dot. But one more term, plus 8MD square sine theta cosine theta theta dot square. And I know that uh, instead of this I can write like one half sine two theta. So to basically uh, arrange the terms, we've got two times two d squared times little m plus two capital M. Sine square theta, theta double dot plus four m d square sine two theta, theta dot square. Okay, very good. So, uh, and then the other term, partial L by partial theta. So we've got this sine theta term here. So it's got like two m d square sine theta cosine theta. Omega square plus four m d square sine theta cosine theta theta dot square minus two little m capital M g d sine theta. Okay, so basically uh, it's a long expression, but well, tools cancel out everywhere, and I will re rewrite this as like d by dt partial l partial theta dot is equal to partial l partial theta form. So I've got d square m plus 2m sine square theta, theta double dot plus 2m d square sine 2 theta theta dot square is equal to okay, on the right hand side so the first term m d square sine 2 theta omega square so this is the, where omega square comes in uh, plus 2 no, actually it's 2 m d square sine 2 theta theta dot square minus okay so Oh wait, I was already dividing by 2 and another 2 for sine 2 theta. Minus m plus m gd sine theta. Uh, I mean, you, you may uh, leave it here. I'm just checking if there are any others. Uh, yeah, maybe. So I've got this 2 on this crush. Yeah, so basically this will just like cancel this prefactor 2 here and you can divide everywhere by d square for instance so if we have little l plus 2 m sine square theta theta double dot plus oh uh, yeah but um, Sine 2 theta, theta dot square. Is equal to um, sine 2 theta omega square minus m plus m g over d sine theta. So this is basically the natural frequency of oscillation. Uh, if it was a pendulum, let's say, right? G over d. So, so let me call this gamma squared. This is again, like like omega square here. Uh, and uh, this is it basically. Like, uh, but the, the the nice thing is basically it's like this is angular velocity square, angular velocity square. And actually, you can also combine these two factors. Uh, I, th I think that will be more natural. So we have m plus 2m sine square theta, theta double dot. So it's like something like effective mass 
at a given theta is equal to, on the right hand side, we've got this sine 2 theta term, which is like looking at the rotational speeds, and then you have the gravitational term. But again, like in a, let's say, if it's a midterm, I mean, like the, here, the expression at the top will be okay, but I would appreciate if you also, like, simplify this, like, little algebraic uh, terms. Okay, let's look at a different example. In this case, we have a mass under gravity. A force is being acted upon, an applied force. There is a spring, there is a dashpot. And the question tells us to use the displacement around the equilibrium position, which is x0. Okay, And uh, the equilibrium position is to be taken when uh, the force is 0. And use this as a generalized coordinate. So basically, if x is the total displacement, once you put the mass on the spring on the dash part and then start shaking it, we are going to basically separate it, separate it into two. One of them is the x0, the static equilibrium position, with just mass, spring, and the dash part. And then y will be the deviation from that equilibrium position. Okay? All right, so uh, let's work on this problem. So first of all, uh, I write that y is x minus x0, or in other words, the total displacement x can be expressed as x0 plus y, okay? And the elastic kinetic and potential energy is just 1 over 2 kx squared. Why? Because the spring, uh, with, before unloading, it's it has its own free length. Once you push the, put the mass on the equilibrium, it will come to the x0 position. Uh, so basically, at static equilibrium, the weight of the mass is supported by the spring, uh, mg kx0, so kx0 is just mg over k, so let's note this on the side. So it means that the VE, elastic kinetic energy, then can be written as 1 over 2 k, so instead of x I will write x0 plus y squared. Okay? And for the gravitational kinetic energy, if you want, you can uh, just simply take it as like minus mg times x. The total displacement, but this is minus mg uh, x0 plus y0. And we know that uh, the constant, so this minus mg x0 minus mg y0, so this is constant, so it, it will have no role. It means it's inconsequential. So you, you could have like, it means that you could have directly written as like minus mg uh, sorry, this is y, right? Minus mgy instead. But like, uh, can can I have? Could I write the elastic as one over two ky square? I can't because uh, the zero position of the spring gets shifted. So you should be careful about like, for instance, in the uh, problem that we solved in the class last time. So like, I've got this and then another, and this, and then another, at this. And the question explicitly says that uh, when x1 and x2 are zero, all the three springs are at their equilibrium length. So for this reason, you could have written like 1 over 2 k, 1 x1 square, etc. But in this problem, you should be careful, why? Because the spring, if you just like put it vertically, it has its own... Uh, it's already at the free line, but then once you push with the mass to the static equilibrium position, then uh, basically uh, things will change for, for the following reason. So you can think of in, in this way. So the equilibrium as a function of, let's say, x. Okay, so basically, so once you put the mass, it means that like you are going to be here. Okay. So it's like, let's say, the x0 position. And then uh, the thing is, like, if you took, like, let's say, if I took 1 over 2 ky square, it means that, like, I will be, uh, actually, let, let me make it this green to show. So, like, if if I have this uh, wrong, if I had taken this wrong, it means that, like, I was going to 
study a spring lung here, which is not the case. Yeah? So you want to uh, be on the red curve. And the way we have written here, so like this way, uh, this is the expression for this red curve. Okay, so 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 that's why uh, you should be careful. Okay, okay. So let's continue. Then uh, we can now write the total potential energy of the system: one over two k x zero plus y square plus. Uh, Minus mgy. Well, I mean, if you want to put minus mg x ray as well, it doesn't matter. And then the kinetic energy is just like 1 over 2k y dot square, right? Because like dy by dt is just dx0 by dt. Uh, sorry, dx by dt minus dx0 by dt, which is 0. So, I mean, x dot is y dot, okay? So then the Lagrangian is k y dot square over two. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm a little bit. Uh, I have a cold nowadays. Sorry for this. Okay, so one half k x two plus y square plus m g y plus the m g x zero. Okay, then we got d by d t partial L by partial y dot minus partial by partial y is equal to q non-conservative non-constraint y. Uh, so the left hand side partial partial y dot is just m y dot, and this full time derivative will be m y double dot. Okay, nice. And then partial by partial y is minus k x zero plus y plus mg, but hey, uh, this is like minus kx0 minus ky plus mg, the thing is k times x0 is like from this expression, I don't know, this is just mg, it's like minus mg here and I've got this plus mg there, so they will just like Cancel out nicely, and I will end up with minus k y. Okay. Well, I mean, if you. Okay, so uh, I mean, if you hit it wrong, it will still come up, but with a for a different reason. And this reason we are going to see on the equilibrium and uh, stable to lecture. And the reason is like basically the local slope will be the same for the green and the red curves here. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, okay, so basically then it means that my equation of motion will be my double dot plus ky is equal to qy and sense. And then there are two applied forces. One of them is f and the other is again the dash paths force. And it's like both, are, both uh, basically deflect with y. So like partial R, so, so let's say this is point A, this is point B, partial RA by partial Y is simply, if this is the J direction, so it's going to be on the minus J direction, minus J, and partial RB, So if this is also going to be minus j, and uh, f is f of t in the minus j direction, minus j, and uh, okay, how about the f dash part? Well, it will be minus c x dot, in this case y dot, right, the velocity vector. Uh, and since why that positive means that you are going in the minus j direction and why that negative is because for the following reason like why is defined positive on the minus j direction so why that negative means we have plus j okay so if i've got like why that is positive then i want 
it means that I'm moving in the minus j direction, so the force will be on the plus j direction. If phi dot is negative, it means I'm going up, like the plus j, so the uh, force should be in the minus j direction. So it, in this case, this will also take care of that sign convention, okay? All right, so basically then I've got my double dot plus ky is equal to f dot, this partial ra partial y plus f dash but inner product with partial rb partial y. Okay, so from the first one we've got f of t, which makes sense because if f is positive, it's going to increase y. And then for the second one, we will have minus CY dot. So the overall equation of motion is MY double dot plus KY is F O T minus CY dot. MY dot plus CY T plus KY is F O T. Okay, let's look at another problem. So here we have an inclined plane with inclination angle gamma and mass m1. And here uh, the thing is, it's not fixed. So it can move on a floor with, without friction and it's actually under the influence of a force, F of T. And on top of this inclined plane, we've got this wheel under the influence of gravity again, and then uh, there is a spring here with K here, okay? Now the question is, uh, basically like in this case, the static equilibrium means that, uh, like they say, as we have seen in the previous problem, we could have just get gotten the elastic potential energy as 1 over 2 K Let's say this is our uh, displacement, like just let me call this x2 and let me call this x1, 1 over 2 x2 square. Uh, and this calculate the Lagrange and all this one, okay? So basically the kinetic energy is t1 plus t2 and t1 is easy, it's just 1 over 2 and 1 x1 dot square. Okay, so the real trick is that uh, what's going on with the wheel. And let's look at the center of the wheel, like what happens to the G point G. It's like even if X2 is zero, even if it doesn't roll, just the presence of X1 will displace the center of gravity by some amount, like this X1. And then uh, we'll have, like for any change in X2, any rolling down, we'll also create uh, this X2 here. And then this angle is the angle of the inclined plane. So in the x direction, we have x1 plus x2 cosine alpha. And on the y direction, we have got just x2 sine alpha is our displacement. So basically like Rg is x1 plus x2 cosine alpha in the i direction plus x2 sine alpha in the j direction. And Vg is x1 dot plus x2 dot cos alpha in the i direction plus x2 dot sine alpha in the j direction. So Vg square is x1 dot square plus 2x1 dot x2 dot cosine alpha plus x2 dot square. Okay, very well. Uh, and for the potential energy, only the wheel will have the potential energy, so it will be, uh, again, so like the amount of drop is x2 sine alpha minus m2g x2 sine alpha plus one half k x2 square, okay? So then uh, we can write down the Lagrangian, which is, by the way, it's a two-doff system, right? So it will be a functional x1, x2, x1 dot and x2 dot, so the total kinetic energy, which is well, one half m1 plus m2 x1 dot square. So it's easier formulator. That's why, why I'm 
putting them like this, plus 2m2 cos alpha x1 dot x2 dot plus, oh sorry, not two, one half times 2, it makes it 1, plus 1 half m2 x2 dot squash. Uh, minus the potential energy, so plus m2 g x2 sine alpha minus 1 over 2 k x2 squared. Okay, so my Lagrangian equations of motions are d by dt partial L by partial x1 dot minus partial L by partial x1 is q x1 non conservative non constraint. And in this case, I've got this force f of t and it moves with x1 uh, but not with x2 so basically like if i consider this point a then obviously partial ra by partial x1 is i whereas partial ra by partial x2 since they are uh, they don't have any real relationship is like zero uh, so this is basically f of t times partial ra like where it's being applied to over partial x1 and it is simply f of t and the left hand side is m1 plus m2, so okay, d by dt, m1 plus m2 x1 dot plus m2 cosine alpha x2 dot. And then uh, we have, okay, so no potential energy contribution minus zero is equal to f of t. So I have m1 plus m2 x1 double dot plus m2 cosine alpha x2 double dot is equal to f of t. And uh, realize that if f of t is zero and uh, you are looking for, for instance, uh, what happens like this is an expression for the horizontal conservation, sorry, conservation of angular momentum in the horizontal direction, in the x direction, if f of t is zero. Okay, so this is the first equation of motion, so this is one. And the second one is d by dt. Okay, so now we got the partial L by partial x2 dot minus partial L by partial x2 is q x2 non conservative non constraint is equal to now in this case basically f of t dot partial ra by partial x2 is again uh, look i mean let, let's say x1 is zero and this wheel is rolling right so basically like the position a is not going to change i mean it will be at the same point in the space that that's why partial ra by partial x2 is zero So this is just zero. Uh, by the way, we have of course forgotten one more thing in the Lagrangian, which is the sorry the yeah the uh, in the kinetic energy. So like I failed the course. <laughs> so the kinetic energy for the wheel is not only one over two m two v g square, but it's also one over two i g theta dot square, where theta is the rolling uh, angle, so it's basically x of r x dot x2 dot over r square. So let me just plug this in back into like my Lagrangian. So plus 1 over 2 ig over r square x2 dot square. Okay, so what just it's just like one more term. So then I have d by dt. Good for if you have uh, figured this out before I did. x1 dot plus m2 x2 dot plus ig over r square x2 dot and on the potential energy side so i got like minus uh, partial l partial x2 so minus m2 g sine alpha plus 1 over 2 sorry plus just kx2 is equal to 0 and now from here we obtain m2 cosine alpha x1 double dot plus m2 plus igr square x2 double dot minus m2g sine alpha plus
plus k x2 is equal to 0. And if it's not like a regular cylinder, then uh, IH is, of course, MR squared over 2, and then you can plug in for further simplification.